back in February, we were planning on having our regular door knock that we've been conducting for the past 55 years, and that's when the Red Shield appeal commenced. But this year we had to pivot very, very quickly, like a lot of other charities, and come up with a new idea. So we developed the digital door knock, and that's where people can go online at salvationarmy.org.au and donate. And when we had our Red Shield Appeal door knock weekend, which was at the end of May, we really struggled. And it was a new concept, and I think it was difficult for Australians to grasp but since then, Australians have been absolutely <laughs> remarkable. So we're on target now to uh, hit what we need to raise at the end of June. But I tell you what, Tim, like Australians are, are generous at the best of times. And when we're going through periods of great wealth, they're wonderful. But when you see them in incredibly uncertain times and really concerning times, just dip in and do what they can. It's incredibly moving. And uh, we've seen the Mindaroo Foundation. They've chipped in big time, Chemist Warehouse. But individuals and families have done their business and it's absolutely remarkable. It makes me proud to be an Australian, actually, Tim. It's great. Oh, and it's great to have organisations like yours that help people who are falling through the cracks in our society. And it, it was a side swipe. It wasn't anything that people saw coming. So, so many people have ended up in job queues and uh, uh, strained financially, young families, and you would have seen a lot of it. Oh, absolutely. And I think the concern for us during COVID is we've been worried about what lies around the corner and uh, we haven't been sure. And I'll tell you what, Tim, we're seeing a tripling of demand for our emergency relief programs right across the country. So that's where people receive practical support from the Salvation Army. And we're seeing people come to us that we've never seen before. So these are often people that have donated in the past and been great supporters of the Salvation Army. And uh, you, you see them come in and their heads are down. They often come with a mate. They're often male at the moment. And they're really embarrassed about being there and uh, they have a mate there to protect him just in case they bump into someone that they might know. And we just want to say to people that are doing it tough, if you need our help, reach out to us. And the Salvation Army is very, very passionate about working with the most vulnerable. We always have been during 140 years and we always will be there, uh, the group of people that we're biased towards. But vulnerable is a term that we understand is very broad. And so it's the young person that lives in a, a really nice suburb with a great family, goes to a great school and finds themselves in a really difficult situation. We're there for them. It's the person that's been working most of their lives and they're paying off their mortgage, got a good family, and all of a sudden they've lost their job and they're doing it incredibly tough. We're there for them. We always will be, Tim, and uh, we'll continue to be as, as uh, uncertainty lies ahead for all of us. Yeah, and, and that... that issue you just touched on there, the individual's pride and anonymity. It's a big thing, yeah. isn't it? Because sometimes people don't want to be asking for help. Oh, yeah. And Tim, we just want to say to people now, if you need our help, reach out to us. And Job Keeper has been an amazing initiative by the federal government, but we all know that it's going to come to an end sometime soon. And that's our worry. And there'll be people that perhaps have never reached out to organisations like the Salvation Army. And when JobKeeper ends, there will be an increasing number of people that need our support. We stand with them. And if they need our help, come and see us and we'll do everything we can, not just to help you, but to make sure it's a reasonable experience. That's, that's what we do. Yeah, I had a chat with John Robertson from Food Bank just a few weeks ago and, and he mentioned that that was a great fear uh, of his organisation. And I can hear what you're saying here as well, is that there is going to be a bit of a cliff that people fall off at that point when JobKeeper stops. Now... Uh, let's get to the nuts and bolts. How do people uh, contact you? Well, with a, a potential tsunami of need just around the corner, we, we actually need the ongoing support of Australians. So if people can, we know it's difficult times and uncertain times, but if they can reach out and help us, they go to salvationarmy.org.au and just contribute whatever they can, and we'd really deeply value that, especially coming up at the end of the financial year. If organisations or families have a little bit left over and they're able to help us, that would be wonderful too. Yeah, if you can uh, kick the can, that would be absolutely yep. brilliant. And, and for those that actually need help, do they go to the same place? Oh, absolutely. I'll either go to the same place, Tim, or if they jump online and just Google their local Salvation Army and contact them, and if for some reason they have difficulty receiving the help that they need, always go to salvationarmy.org.au or 13 Salvos. Yeah, the Salvos do an amazing job. It's great to have you on the program this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Tim.